Uh, good evening. It's 9 p.m. on time for OTC 2019 coverage. My name is Kofi Opon Ochi. And let me remind you that OTC is the offshore technology conference, which is currently happening in Houston, Texas, at the NRG Park. And then uh, the event, which started in 1969, is currently celebrating its 50th anniversary with some great event and then great attendance. And what is happening there, uh, if you actually see what is happening there today, you are going to love it and know that, yes, the event, we are all hopeful that Ghana is going to be coming home with some good news. And that is investors um, coming in into the country and then investing in the various sectors of the country, especially the oil and gas sector. Before we go to what... Um, the, the what happened in the uh, in Houston today at the NRG Park. I would like to take you back to yesterday, a recap of um, OTC 2019 yesterday. So yesterday at the OTC 2019, it was the Ghana Pavilion Ribbon Cutting Ceremony. And the event was graced by the Honorable Minister of Energy and some dignitaries who represented the country at the event this year. Um, also at the event were representative of Conship, and then Joe Mensa, the CEO of Cosmos Energy, was also present representing the exhibitors, and then he also delivered a short uh, speech uh, to uh, to welcome everyone to the event. And then we also had the the Deputy Minister for Energy in charge of Petroleum in the person of Mohammed Enim Adam, who is also present and at the event and he has also spoken and we'll be giving you the bite of what he said today with DNT News uh, reporter Paula Smith. But uh, we also had Jack Webb, the Honorary Consul in, the, in Houston, also speaking to us yesterday at the event and then um, Patricia Assam from also from the Ministry of Energy is present there at the moment. But back to today what is happening there. Today there was a brief um, meeting where the Minister for Energy in the person of uh, Peter Amewu, John Peter Amewu, delivered a short address. And he's, uh, in his address, he encouraged investors and the diasporas to present uh, present at the OTC 2019 to take advantage of Ghana's oil and gas industry and also reiterated that the government of Ghana is very much ready to welcome business in the sector, explaining that there are good and very good policies for indigents. So that is what the Honorable Minister for Energy said in his address and also added that um, other added that the, the Ghanaians in the diaspora should know that government has plans to establish a petroleum hub. This is what the minister said at the event. Moment for the rare opportunity to meet with you Ghanaian business men and women in the diaspora under one roof. I'm also privileged to meet with some of you, the movers and shakers of the global oil industry. I am particularly excited having the opportunity to bring Ghana's oil and gas industry to the doorstep of our brothers and sisters in diaspora this evening. I want to use this opportunity to encourage you to take advantage of the numerous opportunities in Ghana's oil and gas industry so as to replicate the wonderful things you are doing over here in the diaspora. Ladies and gentlemen, Ghana's oil and gas industry is characterized by several activities ranging from oil and gas exploration and production to trading of petroleum products all of this presents several investment opportunities for our brothers and sisters gathered here today. As I said in the morning, there are a lot of untapped reserves in Ghana's sedimentary basins, and the government of Ghana is ever ready to contract any company with the necessary core competence, capability, financial backbone to optimally exploit and exploit those natural resources. For indigents, deliberate policies have already been instituted 
encourage indigenous participations and local capacity building in accordance with our local regulations, regulation airline 2204. This regulation, as you are aware, requires that there must be at least 5% equity participation of an indigenous Ghanaian com company in each petroleum agreement. It is interesting to note that until an IGC or indigenous Ghanaian participation is involved in a petroleum agreement in Ghana, that agreement would not be ratified by Parliament. The local content regulation also empowers the minister to waive or allow an IGC or a local company to acquire less equity participation in the petroleum agreement. Fellow Ghanaians, I encourage you to take advantage of these provisions of the local content regulation so as to participate in our oil and gas exploration and production in Ghana. There are also several opportunities that exist in areas where the Petroleum Commission will be on standby to link up any Ghanaian that will be interested in farming activities. Ladies and gentlemen, let me assure you that our sedimentary basins are currently the risks and highly prospective. Our motherland is politically stable and we have some of the best fiscal regulatory regimes in the world. The maritime boundary dispute, as you are aware, with our western neighbors and ivory coast, have a result. Apart from oil price, currently which is on the rise, nothing should scare anybody from coming to Ghana to invest. Ghanaian in diaspora, let me avert your mind to the opportunities in Ghana's downtown sector by reiterating the government of Ghana's plan to develop a petroleum hub in Ghana which will require refining and processing facilities, port discharge, storage distributions and transportation facilities, as well as trading of petroleum products in Ghana for the West Africa sub-region. Our LPG promotion policy also encourages the use of LPG across the country, which requires the establishment of optimally sized and professionally operated major LPG refill across the country. It is therefore interesting to note that prospective investors are also being invited to take part in this new policy direction in our country. I feel proud today being Ghanaian and I hear about the achievement of most of the Ghanaians in diaspora. What bothers me, however, is the inability of most of you to replicate the activities back home. I have no doubt your capabilities, core competence, and your ability to be able to exhibit what you are doing here back in Ghana. Permit me to repeat that if you cannot do it alone, there is always an opportunity to form partnership. Partnership is the very rock of any investment that we want to achieve some level of sustainable growth. I therefore encourage those that cannot do it alone always to get into partnership. The oil industry, as you are aware, it's highly risk-friendly environment. Highly risk-friendly in the sense that if you decide to share your risks and join partnership with other teams, you'll be able to achieve some level of return on your investment. I understand the program this evening began with the meetings between Ghanaian SMEs in diaspora. This is a laudable idea and I applaud the organizers for this initiative. Let us begin to initiate long-lasting business relationships for our country and for our benefit. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude my speech with an appeal to you Ghanaians in diaspora to come and invest in the petroleum sector of Ghana. The government of Ghana needs you to help develop the country to where we all aspire to be as people. I assure you there is more room for everybody. Thank you once again. Thanks the Ghana Lifting Chamber of Commerce 
and the American Chamber of Commerce for this opportunity to meet with my countrymen and women. Away from the minister's address, we also captured uh, Kweku Awachi from Talu. He is representing Talu, Ghana, and he also gave a short address stating that Talu employs about 400 people, of which 64% of the total are local Ghanaians, um, Ghanaians uh, who are working with Talu, Ghana. And then also explained that the working sector, uh, which is the oil and gas sector, uh, requires services more than just organizing events and workshops, but requires services, logistics, and material procurement, communication, and some more others to make the sector really boom and then do well. He also added that uh, over the years, from two, uh, f for about nine years now, since 2010, the company has offered or awarded contract worth 10 billion to um, local Ghanaians. That's what he said at the uh, conference. It really does reflect the strides that Ghana has made uh, and remind us all of uh, the opportunities that are in front of us. Um, I'm here to say a very few words about how we can strengthen the diaspora participation in the local Ghana oil and gas industry. And um, I'll just make a few, uh, a few statements to that effect. For those of you who don't know, um, Tolo, um, along with its partners, Cosmos Energy, and Adapo, uh, Petro SA, and the Ghana National Petroleum Company, have been producing about 170,000 barrels a day from the Jubilee and Ten fields over the last nine years. 2010, the first production uh, from Jubilee, 2016, from Ten. And you can imagine. Um, that means that we need a highly qualified um, set of skills, uh, labor, expertise. Our key contractor is Modec, sitting across the way. And Modec is our uh, key O&M, uh, running our two FPSOs, and the KNK, the Johns Evans at the Mills. And um, we have a number of engineering contractors that need was shown on the screen. Uh, and many others who work for us. So, oil and gas is a really skilled, highly skilled um, area, and we need very skilled and experienced professionals to help us do this. Um, today, Tolo employs about 400 people, a uh, combination of local demand, people who we have hired locally, people who have brought them from the diaspora, um, our workforce is about 64% Ghanaian and about 36% um, expatriate. Our technical workforce is about 44% Ghanaian and the balance is expatriate. So you see that we bring in a, a wide range of people from both in Ghana and out of Ghana. Um, my leadership team, I have eight, myself included, um, five of us are Ghanaian and three of us are from expatriates, and five of us are women and three men, so we are fairly diverse as well. So we're looking for not just highly qualified men, but also highly qualified women to help us in the sector. But participating in the sector is not just about uh, bringing in people and investing in um, capacity building, it's also about bringing in the right services, uh, logistics and materials, procurement, communication, security and marine services. And over the last 10 years, Solomon and the partners, we have awarded contracts of over 10 billion to indigenous companies working with joint venture partners in places like Houston. Uh, with the expansion of the sector, the new bidding round, um, new entrants coming in, Acta, Exxon, we believe that this is really an opportunity for further growth. I guess really for you who are sitting here in Houston, in the diaspora, how do we further leverage that? And I would suggest to you that um, make as many contacts as possible in Ghana in particular, get to know your regulators, your ministers, uh, your suppliers and your services, 
Um, we're very keen as fellow to get to know who you are as well. Uh, get to know some of the challenges that you face trying to do business in Ghana. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, certainly Tallo is very keen and committed to deepening our local content participation, whether it's here or in Ghana. So we welcome you all to uh, come and see us and talk to us. And finally, I'm confident that if Ghana continues to sustain an environment of good governance and a reliable legal and regulatory regime, it will attract other companies as well as individuals and businesses in the diaspora to participate in the sector. Also present at uh, the event, the NRG PAC Offshore Technology Conference in Houston, Texas, is uh, Honorable uh, Frida Prempe, who is a minister, uh, a former minister, deputy minister for gender, and also a member of parliament. Uh, she also has said that she's present at the event to to build contact with giants in the oil and gas sector, and also build more contact to help boost the Ghanaian economy by bringing them down to the country to invest in the various um, sectors of the country. This is what she said with DNT that correspondent Paula Smith. I'm here to, you know, exchange a lot of ideas with the giants in the oil and gas industry, network, meet new people, meet new friends, and see how best we can also push, move and push our oil and gas industry forward back home in Ghana. So His Excellency Ajay Bawa is Ghana's High Commissioner to the United States and he has also encouraged investors to consider the various opportunities in Ghana's oil and gas industry. Well, I, I'm not exactly an expert in the oil industry, okay. but at least like everybody else, I see a good thing when it's there. Yes. I know what oil has done for other countries right. and we obviously have learned a lot to be able to do much better than the others have done. So I would encourage anybody who is looking out for good investment areas to actually look at Ghana. And you see, I think people should always remember that Ghana is on the junction of the Greenwich Meridian and the equator, just about three degrees south, north, three degrees north. Which, is, which basically means that if you stood at that junction of the intersection, the first country you would ever hit is Ghana. So you can easily conclude that even when God was doing the business, he was standing on Ghanaian soil. I love it. And therefore, if you want to do good business, yes. go to Ghana. Awesome. And uh, even if it is in business you are interested in, but you've been seeking the Lord all these years. Right. Go to Ghana, you might bump into him in the streets. Right. And that is good encouragement for people to go and look you know, at Ghana and do business in Ghana. Okay. Yeah, the, the opportunities are there, the environment is good, okay. and therefore, considering that all that you need is that combination, you cannot miss. And we are very nice people, very hospitable. Yes, we are. Yeah. And I, I always encourage people who go to Ghana that they should not allow the Ghanaians to prevent them from doing anything and the one thing that an average visitor should do. Right. Spend money. Right. Put money in the yes, economy. We need money. Because the Ghanaians are too nice. Okay. It does something that in other places they pay for. And they oh, it's all right, it's all right, don't worry. Right. No, they should worry. Put money in the economy. So I would encourage anybody who is looking for a good opportunity to come in with us. Yeah, because um, they cannot miss. So away from the oil and gas talks and then um, speaking with the giants and all that, we also uh, spoke with uh, some people who also attended the events like um, Her Excellency Stephanie S. Sullivan, the 
U.S. ambassador to Ghana, we spoke to her. Paula Smith did that, speaking to her. And then Ellen Gobert, we spoke to all of them at the event. What I do for Ghana is issue visas right. to people going to Ghana. Right. So I have people from all over the United States that send me their passports, and then I put a visa in it the same day I get it. Well, I'm part of Sister Cities of Houston, which is part of Sister Cities International. In July, we're hosting the Sister Cities International Conference with people from all over, including Ghana. So I wanted to meet people. We also have uh, a one-day Africa Forum. Right. It's going to be at Texas Southern University. Mm -hmm. uh, we are expecting the keynote speaker to be the ambassador from the Africa Union. It's going to be very good. The two things that we want to accomplish are getting more American cities to have African sister cities. Right. And also it's for economic development. So uh, that is what's happening today at the NRG Park, where uh, Offshore Technology Conference 2019 is happening, uh, where Ghana is having hosting her own pavilion. We, we are hopeful that the delegates that are representing the country at the event will bring home good news. As I said earlier, we need good news. We need investors to come down to the country because the Jubilee fields are there. We, we have lots of resources in the country and then we want investors to come down so that uh, over the period we can, we can do something good. We can tap our resources and make good use of it and develop the country. So let's have quickly go through what is going to be happening tomorrow at the event on Wednesday, tomorrow, which is the 8th of May. We are going to have the NRG Ghana Day event at exactly 11 o'clock a.m. And then arrival of ministers and dignitaries will be at 1 p.m. The, the event is going to be at the OTC Arena on the theme building local capabilities in Ghana's oil and gas sector. The guest speaker is the Honorable Minister for Energy um, in the person of John Peter Amel. So that is all for OTC 2019 coverage for this evening. My name is Kofi Opon Ochre. Do join us tomorrow for OTC 2019 coverage at the same time.